Hey everybody, it's Joe. I'm back out at the Tesla Roof Project and it has come a very long way since we began this journey with part one. And as a quick review for everybody, uh, let's take a look back at what we saw in each of the previous three parts. Now, in part one, we were able to talk to the owner of this property, Debbie, and get her thoughts on why she and her husband decided to go with this solar roof on their house. Now, in addition to getting the solar roof and also the power walls installed, they did a lot of renovation and expansion of this house too. So it's been a lot more than just a solar roof project. So it's been a kind of a long journey for them to get to this particular point. And as, we, as I talk a little about the beginning of this project, I'll be putting in some uh, of the original images showing you what it looked like when we came out on the very first day here at this project. And as you can see the progression from removing the roof, putting the underlayment on, getting the solar panels installed, and of course the power walls, this behind me is what uh, it looks like now if you are in the front of the house and looking at the main entrance and what the roof looks like and it really looks uh, amazing. Now in part two, we did go a little more in depth with the removal of the roof and also the installation of something called the underlayment layer. And that is one of the most important parts that goes onto the roof before the solar panels are installed. And this underlayment layer also provides a weatherproof, a puncture resistant and healing nature, and also provides a very solid surface for those solar panels to be installed. In part three, we talked to the company owner, uh, Carson Blair, about the details about the solar panel modular system, the various parts that go into it, including the photovoltaic cell tiles, the glass filler tiles that uh, help fill out the rest of the roof, the metal flashing that uh, goes along the edges to give that final look, also some of the uh, ridge caps and also some of the valley uh, flashing as well to make the entire roof uh, completed. And uh, I would recommend you take a look at that video because there's a lot of detail about what goes in to the solar roof as well. Now here for today, I wanted to give you some additional information about uh, what is going on at the project as it's coming to its end. The first is what the building looks like behind me. You can get a good sense from what you can see here. Also with these drone shots, uh, what the roof looks like on this very sunny and beautiful day here in South Texas, just north of San Antonio. And uh, you can get a good idea with these images of how that roof looks as it's completed, kind of that entire roof uh, look that uh, makes it one contiguous uh, piece. It's not uh, like you would think with original or older solar panels that are kind of attached to the existing roof. This is actually the roof itself and also the solar panels. So really gives a unique and a much more classic look to the house than what you would see with normal solar panel installation. Now, one of the things that I do want to talk about a little more in this video is has to do with the power wall installation and also the gateway. So let's take a look at that installation next. So I'm here in the garage of this Tesla solar roof and power wall installation. And behind me, you can see the three power walls that have been installed as part of this entire project. Now, this was done in the garage. Uh, you can actually have these done on the outside or the exterior of your house uh, or in other parts of your house, depending on your particular needs and that kind of uh, installation that uh, you have uh, decided on and have worked with the installing company for the design. Now, one of the benefits of this particular project is that this was a renovation. And because of that, they were able to run all of the wires from the solar roof, through the attic, through the walls to this particular location. So it gives it a very nice, clean look. 
And uh, uh, you know, again, it depends on what your particular installation requirements are as to how this would look. The uh, three power walls and also the uh, inverters that are above two of them. And each of the power walls is uh, approximately 12 or so kilowatts. So this has got uh, somewhere in the area of 30 to 36 kilowatts of storage uh, capability. And that matches up with the solar roof uh, production uh, capability on this particular installation as well. Now, in addition to these power walls, we have the gateway and of course all of the wires and conduit that was installed between the solar roof, the power walls, and the gateway to make this entire system operational. So I've come over here where the gateway has been installed for the Tesla solar roof and also the power walls. You'll also notice that this item here is a manual shutoff that is installed as a safety mechanism to ensure that if there are any electricians working on this system, they're able to shut down the entire solar panel system and the uh, power wall uh, to prevent electricity from going into the grid and causing some issues with any of the electricians. And this is a part of the required safety features when you have this installation. Now the gateway itself is right here and uh, this is the system that is responsible for directing the flow of energy and this will direct that flow from the solar panels to the power walls from the power walls to the grid from the grid to the power walls and ultimately how all of this works together seamlessly to make sure that the home continues to have power throughout the entire uh, time, including blackout periods. Another interesting part of the power wall system and associated with the gateway is that it is linked up to the internet and it is able to detect inclement weather, storms, or anything else that may cause an interruption to electricity. And through that process, it's able to charge up the power walls ahead of time to make sure that your home stays uh, with electricity despite what the weather conditions might be. Now another part of this particular installation is you'll notice that the power meter for the electric company is uh, right here and all of these systems are best installed very close to the power meter and also the main circuit box because again for that uh, safety of having this manual disconnect right at this particular location. So I would expect that uh, you would see something similar to this uh, on your particular installation. Uh, it, the details might vary, but the basic idea of how this is installed uh, is what you would expect. And one of the things that I did want to point out, um, and it can be an unintended expense, uh, and it's not directly related to the solar panel or the power wall installation, and that has to do with your main breaker box here. And this particular installation, as the crews were doing the electrical work, they determined that the original box here had had a lot of water ingress and corrosion of many of the electrical contacts and also the circuit breakers. So for this particular project, this entire panel had to be replaced with one that met code and was safe for operation. Again, you may have something like this with your particular installation. Uh, it really depends uh, from one project to the next, but I would make sure that you take that into account uh, in case uh, you do have something with uh, your electrical breaker panel that may not be up to code and you'll discover that during the installation. Now, interestingly enough, as a quick aside, the Cybertruck Foundation Series and also the Cybertrucks later on come with the option of doing the power share to power your house. And it uses the same kind of gateway that the power walls use. So that gives you a great opportunity if you were to purchase a Cybertruck and you do a solar roof project like the one that we've been covering, you can actually take advantage of that same gateway to not only install power walls, but also use the Cybertruck to power your home as well. Now, we're going to uh, talk with Angela from Victa Energy as the next part of this video. 
and we're going to get some additional information from her about this particular installation and a few other uh, pieces of information that you may find interesting. And then we'll also be wrapping up this video by talking with the owner, Debbie, about her experiences, what it's been like to have this installation done, and uh, what it is like now at the conclusion of this project. Thank you very much for watching and for your support. Take care.